I'm Karen Warden with Film Courage, the radio show. We're here outside the studio with Ralph Greco and Seth Kaplan. They joined us on our roundtable discussion as well as Gregory Bain. And uh, we uh, had a college student email us um, the other day and asked um, what the best place is to find out about independent film. So we're wondering, is there a dedicated platform for discovery of independent film that you know of? And if not, how can we change that? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of great resources on the net. I mean, for news, I don't really go to uh, IndieWire, but I think long term th there might end up being some kind of platform that that every film is uploaded to. Maybe that'll be Netflix. But if it gets to the point where it's easy to find, I'm not sure it doesn't cease to become an independent film. I think by definition, independent films are films are constantly being discovered. They're new and fresh voices. So I think it's almost that's part of the allure for a lot of people is that they are kind of cool to find. It's like little gem hunting. And the cost in finding the new and most interesting material, there's never an easy resource. you got to go out there and hunt it down. Yeah, I mean, I think IndieWire is a good one. I think Filmmaker Magazine has a lot of good articles in their blog and uh, that kind of thing. I think a lot of following like, Ted Hope's Truly Free Film, um, there's a lot of disinformation. I also think things like Netflix where there's a lot of indie movies that are streamed, a lot of old classic um, movies like Criterion movies and things like that that are, that are you can just get streamed um, so that you might find a director that you like or, or go to the thing that has like you know alternative or independent film and you might see one movie you like and then follow that director's work or something like that um, and uh, yeah I don't I, I don't know what a platform would be eventually for it I think um, it's all going to become kind of homogenized as there's tons and tons of different types of films. And then, Ralph, after the uh, the show, when we took our headphones off, you brought up an interesting kind of debate that I know a lot of people have talked about as far as, you know, you come out here, you do end up working in the industry, but it's not maybe the creative part or it's just not exactly in the area that you want to be working in, but yes, you are in the industry. And then you kind of get pigeonholed and you kind of stay there and maybe you're making great money and then the trappings of success kind of come along. Um, can you touch on that for us, how sure. there's kind of this way that you almost get sucked in? Um, yeah, no, I think I think it goes to kind of what the whole theme of the show kind of became, which was kind of, you know, what what is uh, defining what kind of career you want and then sticking to it or, or adapting with it. And I think a lot of, um, you know, the, the industry is huge. I mean, it's, it's going to L.A. And, and becoming part of the film industry doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go be a director. Some people can, you know, go be a grip or work in, as a set decorator um, on indie movies, on big movies. Um, it's not that hard to get, get a, a production assistant job and work your way up. Um, if that's what you want to do and that's what you're committed to. Um, along the way, though, you... And I guess it's true with, with anything in life. It's like, you know, if you go to graduate school for 10 years, I mean, you're going to be a professional student, but um, with this, um, the business does tend to define you by what you do. So say if you do come out here wanting to be a director and you end up becoming, you know, a, a camera grip or something like that, and you work on a bunch of films, um, you can, people will know you as that, and you're going to have to make, you know, a, 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 a be brave and say, look, I'm going to stop doing that, I'm going to shift my gears. Um, the, the other side of it is that by doing that, you gain tremendous experience. You have access beyond belief of, of professionals and people and things. But, um, you know, it, I think everybody comes to the light where it's basically, what do I want to be doing? And, and some people may be fine just having, I know a lot of people who are fine. They came out here, you know, 10 years ago, wanted to be directors and stuff, and then they became coordinators or producers or, you know, television producers, and they're fine with it. It's just, that's what they want to be doing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a successful career. Um, it is a business of, of relationships. It's not so much a business of, I'm going to send my resume and get hired. It's a business of building relationships and interacting with people, having personal relationships with people, and gaining their kind of trust so that they'll hire you on other jobs and, and do that. And that's what's different than, say, you know, any other business where you can go, you know, be part of a company and, you know, move up the ladder just by, you know, getting raises, so... So I think it's a choice people have to make and have to be aware of early on. I mean, for me, I, I completely agree. I think it is relationship-based, um, and those, and that, and that I, I have found for myself in starting out in in the industry, and when when I when I look to people who are just entering the industry, having a clear definition of what they want to do makes it so much easier to help them. If someone says, "I want to be an actor, writer, but I'm kind of interested in editing," also, you're a little you don't have as much direction to say, you know, how can I help this person? Whereas if it's very clear, I'll, I want to be a publicist. 
and think, oh, okay, I can, I, I know some publicists, I can call, I can, you know, if the person seems really focused. In my experience, um, what I did, I started making movies when I was in high school and college. And when you do, high, like, you know, when you do, when you're like a student, you do everything. Now you're the director, sometimes the actor, you're the photographer, you're craft a producer, service. craft yeah. service. And what I noticed is, like a lesson for me, is um, people say, oh, are you a detail-oriented person, like a, a detail-oriented? And I noticed the details of directing never captured me. Like eye lines, I, I really mm. couldn't care. Even wardrobe choices of colors, it never captured me. But the other details of production in terms of like the theme of the movie and how it would correspond to an audience, right down to what time lunch is coming and how many shots we're going to get. Those details couldn't escape my head. So I basically tried and tried working on films in all kinds of different capacities, and it was the details that captured me that kind of drove me into the producing role, and that's the role that, that I love to do, and, and that, that really helped me when I, by the time I come out here, I knew that's what I wanted to do, and so it was really beneficial when I'd meet people who might be in a position to help me and say, I am dedicated to producing, that is what I want to do, um, and then they were able to kind of help me with, with their assets in the producing field.